Psalms 26 from verse 6 to 7. I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell and tell of all thy wondrous works. Hallelujah. My topic this morning is the power of testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is our month of thanksgiving. There is power in testifying. When you couple the word testimony in the Bible or the word testify or the word testifier, we have numerous encounters. So testimony is a biblical truth that produces results. Hallelujah. A testimony is a testament by a witness or a first-hand experience. That means it has happened to you or you were there when it happened. Then you speak about it. The Bible itself is called the Bible of Testament. Old Testament and New Testament. It's a life of people. Praise God. So these are things that are true and things that have happened. It is a fact in life that many people keep quiet about mind-blowing things that God has done for them. There are people sitting down here right here this morning that God has done mind-blowing things for you. And you have never testified. There are things that God, what God has done for you, if you speak about it, it has a lot of benefit. So today, before the end of the service, the Lord is giving you two chances to testify. So two people, there are things that God has done for you that is mind-blowing and you have never shared. Praise God. Many people are in a heart. Now, I will give you three reasons why people don't testify in church. Number one is because they have ignorance about the revelation, the purpose, and the benefit of testifying. Many people don't know the revelation behind why people testify. The purpose of testifying, the benefit. I have been into services where it's like the people like get tired of the lady testifying. Praise God. The person, how are this person? In fact, there was even a time, I think JJ was testifying, and people were like, I have to come and warn the people. Some people get tired when some people are testifying. It's like, where is this person coming up? It's like, we have people that we call them testimony people in the church. But you, you are, you are of the spiritual echelon. Your encounters are celestial and mysterious. When you share it in church, we will not understand. Hallelujah. <laughs> so many people don't know why people testify. And the benefits of testifying. Number two reason why people don't testify in church is because of pride. Under the guise of shyness. Not just pride. The pride has disguise. And the disguise is shyness. Me, I cannot stand before people. Though. Me, and I'm ashamed of crowd. How will I start telling them my story? Me, I'm shy. It's pride. My brother, my sister. He's just hiding under shyness. or using shyness to cover it. Because why you cannot tell us, you tell people outside. Why you cannot tell us in church? If they come and share, share your story in Ninja Salmon or Ninja, you will share it. You are the one that took TikTok took, took videos with 1,000 followers. You are not shy. You are not shy of that one because they are not there. It's actually present. People feel like, ah, no. How can I be testifying? The third reason why people don't testify is because of demonic resistance. The devil is resisting them so that he can toward the testimony. Because once you testify, it seals the testimony. So God has done many things. There are people that have never testified in their life. Hearing me this morning, today is your deliverance. Never. Ever. And you may not even be planning to, but today, receive the grace to testify. Say what God has done for you. Don't allow pride enter you and the devil will tell you you are shy of people. The truth is you are not shy. You are not shy. I know you. Please tell your neighbor, your pastor know you. You are not shy. Hallelujah. And then don't allow the devil resist your miracle. Don't allow the devil. Have the boldness to write your name and come out and testify. Now, I will tell us the purpose why people testify. Number one is, when people testify, they acknowledge the doer of the results they have. In Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 2 Corinthians 3 verse 14, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
in all your ways acknowledge the lord hallelujah so when you testify you are acknowledging that it is god that doeth or did what you have done in first Corinthians, first corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 actually second corinthians 2 verse 14 when you testify you are acknowledging that it is god that did it you are saying that this is not a confusion now thanks be unto god which always causes us to triumph in christ and make it manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place so your testimony is an acknowledgement that god was involved you wrote an exam is a good place to testify you have an you see the person that had an accident attempt and the one that traveled without an accident who should testify the one that traveled and then the car was swerving the car was almost jamming the other car and then the car some assaulted and some assaulted eight times and the person came out and the one that traveled there was no accident attempt at all who should testify the one that escaped the accident uh, but who should testify more the one that did not have accident attempt at all well but it, but actually in church we have reversed the situation is the one that escaped the accident that testify why the one that never had accident attempt so the one that escaped a bullet the bullet passed through their neck and the one that the bullet did not near them who should testify more See, we have changed it. The people that have near death experience are the one, but you that God saved you from even witnessing it, we don't testify. Hallelujah. So we are acknowledging that everything, your journey going and coming, is of the Lord. Because the truth is, how many of us have ever gone to the park and asked the driver your driving license? What is your driving experience? How many have ever done in the park? We don't know. We don't even know the driver. We don't know whether the guy is high or is not high. We don't know whether he has gone through the road or has not gone through the road. We just enter with our life, with our property, and hope to arrive. And if we arrive safely, we should be grateful to God. Somebody that was admitted in the hospital this year will be the one that will testify. But somebody that did not even near the hospital don't have a reason to testify. Wow, this year I didn't have a headache. But the one that had a headache that escaped is the one that testified. So actually, if you don't have a, a bad thing that has ever happened to you, you have more reasons to testify. Come on, are we together? The one that stayed eight years before getting admission and the one that got admission immediately, who should testify more? The one that got admission immediately. See? We must learn to acknowledge God for... because. When you think properly, you have more reason to thank God when things are working properly. Or you want God to allow the battles to happen first before you come and testify. You want the accident to almost happen. It will be like a movie, James Bond. You, the angels will come and save you. So you come, that is what you want. If you want it, God is a good master at that. Some of the experience you have can leave you traumatic for the rest of your life. There are people that don't want to fly again because of what they saw in plane crash. There are people that don't want to set it because of what they saw. So thank God because nothing bad has happened. Hallelujah. Number two, people testify to bring clarity to men. In Exodus 8 verse 19. The Bible said, this is the finger of God. Sometimes many people are confused. What is happening in your life? What is responsible? You see, in their family, eh, all of them are very intelligent. All of them have gone to school. We have doctors. So you two, you are deceived. In their families, all the ladies marry. Ah, they are very, very lucky. Yo. I heard somebody say, in their family, all the women are fertile. Once they marry, first month they are pregnant. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you testify, it brings clarity to the men. It's not our family, it's God. It has nothing to do with our family. It has everything to do with God. It brings clarity to men. Like this child is very, very gifted. Because there are children that are gifted. Those that can play drum, play keyboard, play bass guitar, play saxophone. Have you seen people like that? And then us, we have learned tutorials for two years. See, we cannot play. 
Say in our family we have we have gift for instrument. You are sure? You are sure? <laughs> Testify and bring clarity that it is God. When you keep quiet, you people are still confused. People don't know, is it God? Is it your skin? Is it the devil? Is it because you are smart? Is it because of connection? But your testimony clarifies that this is God. Come on now, we together. All the things in your life that people are confused about, you will give them clarity after this service. By the time you step up, you say, now God, they do, now God, they run now. You understand me now? Say, so it's God that is doing it. Number three, testimonies help build the faith of others. In Luke chapter 1 verse 31 to 41, when the angel come, came and told Mary that you would give birth to a child without sleeping with a man. Mary was a smart lady. She knew that it's not possible. But God had to lead her to Elizabeth who was also old and conceived. And when she saw her testimony, she believed her own miracles. The same with Matthew chapter 9 verse 8. Sometimes when you hear the testimonies of others, your faith is built. That if God can do it before, He can do it again. Is this not Job Tham that I know? God can do it. Why do I read biographies? When I read those biographies of Living Faith Church, how they started. When I read about how they were they, for how many years? Is it four years without drum? Inside Bacha in Kaduna City, not Kaduna Village, in the town, Bacha. Bishop was saying in Shiloh, they were dancing with joy. They were excited. He said that if you come and sing with drum, you will go with your drum. How once upon a time he was bathing outside with Bishop Oedipo, 6 a.m. they go to the river to bath and come out by 6 a.m. When I read about his voice watching that after service, the members were running away so that they would not push it. When I read about how he came back home and he saw his wife cook with egg, he was shocked. Where did he get egg from? Say, we have not reached this level in this family. How he could not afford rent. How this, when you read stories like that, and you to God as they come into ministry, your faith is, and when you read those stories, and then you look at what God has done with him 40 years later, you are encouraged. Your faith is built. When you hear about, okay, let me use music now, example, Nathaniel Bassi, he was not serious, he was playing in clubs. He was playing trumpet for clubs, nightclub. Before he started playing for church, after a long while, he sang one song. When you hear the story of people like Prosper or Chimana singing in Dunamis, you see videos with him with coat. You know, suit and coat. See them with coat, backing. Small, small, him and Hima, Hima sings. Very, very small. I have videos that are backing. It's still in my laptop. Small boy singing. Only one song. I was there in that minister's conference, 2017, when he sang it. I asked my guy, who, who sang this song? I was in overflow. Four. Who sang this song? I said, the, the, my neighbor said he doesn't know too. So when I came back home, I was living close to the Revival House Church. Then the Sunday I had the Revival House Church choir singing the song from home. I said, ah, this was the song that one guy sang in Dunamis Church. Only to know that it was his song. That the, that the story has ended from there. Comfortably change of story forever. Last year, no, this year August. No, last year August, I saw his mess this E-class. After service, I just saw him enter white, clean. Vehicle, not car. Yeah. Hallelujah. Clean. Pro- properly blessed. Properly. Just one. So, so when you hear stories like that, you too, you know your faith can build up. When you hear the story of the lady that look at the way she looks, somebody was married, married from family house. Myself and Pastor Emma were discussing about the lady. Charlie. His case is not, I don't want to say she's not fine. But there are people that are wonderful and fearfully made. There are people that are wonderfully made. Man, this guy, this girl is married. Even my faith was built up. Nobody cannot marry. Yeah, everybody can marry. I'm telling you. My cousin, his name is Bobai. My namesake. The woman he married was a dwarf. Not, and the guy is taller than me. Yes, my, my namesake, Bobai. 
The, my wife was at the wedding in December last year. Not that I was told, not that I read the newspaper. Dwarf, the lady was a dwarf. The guy is taller than me. Love killing me. Ah! You will fall in love in Jesus' name. Hearing stories like that, you as a lady, you know that you can marry. You are not a dwarf. Proper wedding, he paid her dowry. Wedding gown. War suit. Married her. Carried her to his apartment. Properly. Everybody was around. When you hear stories like that, you can marry. When you hear my story of how I got wedded, when I went to do introduction, transport to come back from Gauraka, Zuba, I didn't have. Yeah. Transport, like, the man I want to marry you. <laughs> transport to come back to Lokoja, I didn't have. Yeah. And I'm not marrying from the north. Okay. And I've married well. So when you hear people's testimony, you are encouraged. There are people that when you hear they are a pastor, you tell me you do have hope. <laughs> you are a pastor, I have hope. Me do God and call me. So testimony build, maybe your story will build up the faith of somebody. Hallelujah. There is somebody I think that they may never get an admission. Tell them how your brain was not working. And you got admission. The brain was not working at all. The battery was too. <laughs> but you're a graduate. Encourage the person. What are you talking about? I made it, I, I was, I, I met copper that cannot write formal letter. Formal letter. Write formal letter. Copper. They cannot write. There are secondary school students that need that kind of motivation. Don't be sincere. Tell them you wrote the exam in Miracle Center. Just tell them that one way. Just, don't be sincere. Tell them how you graduated with the at least to have a certificate or not to have a certificate, which one matters? Is the person that has never gone to school that insults at class? If you have been to school, you will never insult at class. Even a pass. The difficulty to submit 100 level lecture, pa, 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 pa. You know, I have my secondary school classmate here. When we were in secondary school, we were, we were not respecting coppers, so we were not respecting them. When they come, uh, they were not in like, uh, until I went to 100 level. First semester. Lecture, they say LT1 before you know it's LT2. Before they say they move to that campus. You will read for exam today. The next time you read the exam is three weeks later. Ah! I saw pepper. I can remember in Boso, I saw a copper from far. I can, if you take me to my school now, I can tell you the place where I stood. I saw a cop. I stood at the church. I said, "Yes, sir." I respected the guy. All the people that say that there are courses. If you study fishery, you don't know what you're talking about. If you have been to school, the difficulty to write go to school. On first semester, second semester, second semester exam, write carry over, and then two projects with some sadist lecturers and graduate. You have a testimony. These people that have not been to school that will be saying, ah, now only two one you have. Only two one. <laughs> that is two one, three point five. Ah, you don't get two point five. Wow. They think you carry by just write three point five. <laughs> Hallelujah. The testimony can build on the faith of somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. Can build on the faith of somebody. I have faith. And I believe in testimonies. Number three. So will you share your story to build up the faith of somebody? Share your story. Share your story that God can restore, God can heal, God can deliver. Many people have been healed but cannot share their testimonies. Number three. Our testimonies, is it number three now? Number four. Testimonies are tools for subsequent battles. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 34 to 35 and then 45. David, first of all, fought with wolves, lions, and bears. Hallelujah. When they came to take his sheep. Then now he saw the human versions of the bear in the person of Goliath. Then he told, he told Saul that your servant, 
Then said David to the Philistines, okay, in verse 4, first of all, verse 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him. If it's me and you, it's a big testimony that the lion didn't come for me. That's not true. Like, I, I taking care of animal, and the lion came and left you and took coat. That is a miracle. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, I thank you. When the lion came, he saw me. He went away. But the David was not like that. He went after the lion and smote it and removed the animal from his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Verse 36. Thy servant slew both the lion and the beard. And these uncircumstanced Philistines shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the Lord, of the living God. So what you have confronted before is a strong tool for your future battles. That is why people that suffered when they were young, they become mature on time. They become strong on time. They are geared on time. Some of them, you see some Ajebota, some of them, they are crying. Mm, because you have not seen something in life. When you have seen lion and bear, when you see serious your problem, there are people that will sleep as if nothing is happening. Hallelujah. Hey, there are people that when their battery is not on on their phone, maybe something is wrong, they are already crying. But somebody that's laptop screen has broken four times, it's not moved. But no longer, no, no, nothing moves you again. It's true. So what you face in the past, if God did it before, when I was trusting God for school fees, 100 level, God provided. A day before the school fee is over, now that my rent is expiring next month, God can do it. There was a time I didn't have food, and a neighbor knocked on my door and gave me food by miracle. Now that I'm hungry again, God can do it. I have seen God wait people to give me money. Now that I don't have money, God will do it again. So your testimony of the past is a weapon for your subsequent battles. So most of us that have been challenged, keep it in your shelf. Hallelujah. You will need it because the devil will come back again to try you. If a witch have looked for your trouble, another witch will come. A higher witch. Maybe a marshal or a corporal this time will come or a lieutenant will come. But tell him your brother was defeated last year. I will defeat you again. Come on, now we together. So testimonies are tools for subsequent battles. And if you think you will not face a battle in life, tell your neighbor, wake up. Yeah, there are things you will face in life. And then you need to draw from the testimonies of your past. From the past. From the past. I saw God do it for my mother. I saw God do it for my brother. I saw God do it for this person. God did it for me in the past. Ten years ago, five days ago, it has happened before. It is what I have seen it before. You understand me? Have you ever heard me say it's what I've seen it before? So stop testimonies and may you not lose your testimonies. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. If God has healed you of a terminal disease, what, what about headache? What about headache? Number five, testimonies have a way of sealing our encounters. In Luke 17 verse 19, ten lepers were healed, one returned and testified, and the master said, Jesus said, you have been made whole. There is a way that after you have told people what Jesus Christ has done, he will not take it away. It will not be taken away. Because the integrity of God has already been attached to your testimony. Come on, I don't know if you want to understand me. There are many people here that even testify before the miracle happened and the miracle has to happen. Why? Because your testimony has a way of connecting it to the integrity of God. So you were healed of cancer and then you are no longer healed. God healed you. Okay, the God that healed you took it away. So God will protect the testimony. Come on, now together. So many times the reason why you have lost the testimony is because you never testify. Never seal the testimony. Nobody knew. You were healed in the public, private and then the sickness. There was somebody who said, I was healed and I'm sick again. I was healed and I'm sick again. Because you never testify. Because if you notice men of God, if you come and testify, many of them pray for you after testifying. Have you noticed it? It is permanent. It is sealed. That declaration is important. Is very very important. It's sealed. You see what you have testified will not be lost. 
all things being equal. Number six. Testimonies are important for teachings and references. In Psalms 44 verse 1, the Bible says, We have heard with our ears what the Lord has done. In Judges 6 verse 13, uh, Gideon was also saying, What about all the miracles we have heard? Wow. If you want your mind to be blown away, I want to give you services to attend. Or if you have that, I carry your phone and Google. Or on Tuesday, next week Tuesday, connect to Dunamis TV live and watch healing and deliverance service. I used to tell my friend, Pastor Tom, that I really wish I cannot be hearing some of these testimonies because when you hear some of the miracles that happen, you like they look too real to be real. Swollen leg right before your eyes melt, the blood changing to like. It's not really like cancer, God, this God. What some people record 34 in one year, in, in two hours, they happen at the speed of water. Yes, open up, you can hear, close the ear, they can you see, can you see like miracles. Go to another service is Shiloh service. You can carry your phone and type Shiloh testimonies. A sign that the people are common to testimonies that they don't even respond when the testimony is called. Because the, the people are used to the miracles. How can a woman have six children? After 22 years of waiting on God. 22 years. Six children. This Shilo. Not last 24 years Shilo. This one. This one that passed last week. How can a woman carry six children? Four boys, two girls alive. How can a woman of 68 years, husband of 75, give birth? That happened in Mountain of Fire. I conclude, if I see anybody that doesn't fear a man of God, fear that person. If, they, if, if I meet somebody that doesn't fear Bishop or Edebo, I am more afraid of you. Because you are dangerous. Anytime you can die at any moment. <laughs> if I fear you, Somebody like that, you are not afraid. You see, in this world, eh, once you hear that this one is the son of a native doctor, you are afraid, you behave yourself. You do not hear that he's a native doctor, that he's a, his father is a DBA. This is the big DBA of Adam Kolo Junction. Ah, this is his son. You avoid him. Nobody will look for his trouble. It's true. The doctor of the DBA himself comes out. <laughs> The son of the DB are threatening you on his father's behalf. But here are believers. They are not afraid of men of God. They are not afraid. It's not even the son of the man. It's the man of God himself. You are, not, you are insulting him with your Android phone. Eating our money. If they sell you <laughs> and sell your asset, everything, let, let, how much are you worth? Or how much have you dropped in offering that you will eat? Insult him, insult his family, insult. If I see somebody like that, I am afraid because my life is like, because you can die any moment. <laughs> when you see somebody like that, they are dead boy. <sighs> when I hear their testimonies, like, it makes me fear. Only a few people have three PhD. They might have eight. So you, how many do you have? They are insulting him. Yeah, you, 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 you that are insulting him. Huh? Let me see your master certificate. How? In what course? He, he has a two one in mathematics. You know how you graduated with your wayek. You know how you, you know how you did with your wayek. Has a PhD. Now recently, the Duke of became a professor in biotechnology intellectually sound, spiritually dangerous, all round. If I, even we will look at their testimonies, they are alone. Powerful. Come on, now we're together. Somebody died for eight hours. The wife. Now it's the members that are not producing the testimonies. I believe in testimonies. And we make them for references purposes. That if God can do it there, he can do it here. Bishop David Oedepo said when he went to Ora Roberts University, he saw that they have what we call 
The twin tower. Say, if God can do it there, he can do it anywhere. And then he came back and built the 50,000 to that capacity. And then now we have mega church structures in this nation. We have the glory dome. We have the hand of God cathedral. We have the uh, deeper life. Uh, I don't know the name of that one. We have the ark up going. We have major things. 100 billion naira. When you hear testimony like that, there are references that we have to take. That no matter how barren you are, you can be healed. Come on, now we're together. It's not men, if a woman is 65, it's no longer menopause. It's men not stop. It's no longer as if the thing has paused, it has stopped. Keep at your naturally or not by CS. God is fearful. So sometimes you take the testimonies of people to share for references purpose to, to teach and to encourage people how things work. Number seven, testimonies help us understand the multi-dimensional abilities of God. By that I mean that God cannot be boxed. Because when you hear the testimonies of the financial successes of others, you will hear that it happened differently. Some people, God gave them breakthrough in their business. Some people, God gave them favor. Some people, God gave them an idea. The story is never the same. I don't know if you notice it. So it tells you that there are many ways that God can work. Number eight, testimonies reveal that God is faithful. In Acts chapter 15 verse 4, the apostles came and shared and rehearsed the deeds and the acts of God to show that God is faithful. Hey, in my life, if they say define God, I can start with God is faithful. Hallelujah. I've seen that if you give God your best, he will give you his best. You can never outgive God. You can never sacrifice more than God. There's nothing you will do that God will not give you times 10. I want to ask you a question. How many of you know the colleagues of, of, of Dr. Paul and Nature that studied medicine together? You know any professor like that? You know any professor? Professor of medicine? Mention one professor of medicine that you know, please. <laughs> Where he enters today, if he's a doctor, he won't enter there. But when he sacrifices his medical certificate, he looks like a fool. He looked like a fool. How can you? Because he was a doctor, his wife was a doctor. His wife was a rich from a rich family, also from a rich family, all of them sacrificed and moved to Abuja. And when the wife was pregnant, hunger will finish them. Pregnant woman drinking gari. Always doing hand attachment. She was plating her hand with her. No money for attachment. She said that she relaxed her hair first when she gave her to her first daughter. That was the first time she relaxed her hair. And then look at where he is today. You know that God is faithful. I saw his Royce Royce August this year. His clearance vehicle is the one that this government has used. This government has used. That's the clearance vehicle. Not that I was told. Clean. Because if you give God, he's faithful. I've seen many people insult people in campus that were dedicated to God. So that you carry God for you. Somebody say, we report me to my parents. Insult people that were committed. He said, oh, everything is church, church. There are people still insulting some people going to church today. They call them Mama Sanctuary. He said, you carry choir for your head. You carry church for your head. They call them Sister Mary. And they call us all names. See, in my discovery of life, if as a student they have never called you pastor, your Christianity is questionable. Because once you become serious, they start calling you pastor. It's true. Hallelujah. And then I have seen the love of the same people. Do you know the story of Apostle Arome? How God, how his people mocked him in campus. Apostle Selman was, his father rejected him and disowned him. And said that you are not my son. My prayer point is that you don't, your younger ones don't. That is Apostle Selman, you celebrate, I celebrate. So I say that my prayer point is that your younger ones don't become like you. But today we are playing, ah, oh, I want to be like, I want to marry Apostle Selman, I want to be like him. Look at his story. And look at what God has made out of him. God is faithful. So when you hear the testimonies of people, that is why I'm encouraged to faith. See, the reason that at the time I was praying, 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 somebody said that, is it prayer you will eat and die? <laughs> no. Somebody told Bishop Doug, is he that? But you think by becoming a wreck after fasting, that's how you go to heaven? 
Look at his life today. So hear the testimonies of people and then you, what you are doing gives you a confidence that God is faithful. They may be mocking you today, but God is faithful. Come on now, together. You may spend your money on transport, you can do certain things, you can, many, you are sacrificing. Your cook money you will give for project, church project. <laughs> money for your designer's clothes you gave to church. Your small salary you are tightening, and you don't have data, you are doing worse at 15 error. You look like a fool. Come on, all together. Yeah. I want to assure you that God is faithful. There are testimonies of faithful people. When you stay in one place with one brother and you marry him, you look like a Jew girl. You don't know. You have met one man, you have killed yourself. Don't worry, God is faithful. God will change his story. Congrats to all the sisters that believe in our brothers. I want to tell you that God is faithful in our lives. The testimonies of people ahead of us tells us that God is faithful. My mother, my biological mom, told me that two guys, because my mom was very, very intelligent. She went to Queen Amina. She was very, very, very good. And then one guy sent her dowry from abroad. He wanted to marry her. From abroad, her dowry landed in dollars. And then my father came to marry her. My father was broke. His father was dead. He had nothing. Nothing. Only he's here. He has here. That's the only thing. There so was no money anywhere. No money anywhere. That she chose to marry my dad. And left that one with American dollars. She'll have flew out immediately. Two years later, that one married. Beating the wife. Drinking. Smoking. Beating her. And he died seven years later. Obey God. God is, when God says, be a teacher, stay local, just stay. Don't move to Lekki. You will let your leg, you will let your leg will tell you there. Yeah. God is faithful. God told Apostle John to slay man, go to Auchi. He said, God, did you say Bauchi or Auchi? God said, I said, Auchi. At his level, should he be, have you been to Auchi before? Have you seen in church? The road is, Dust up under there. Government intentionally did to the front of the church and stop, and they continue after the church. Yeah, lots of trouble. They did the road almost to the church. They stopped after the church. They continue. Throw of us, yeah. Just to look for trouble. Brown, brown, brown. They have to be repaired because of the dust. At this level, if this, if you if you go to Sudan, jam. Go to America, jam. Paris, every in the world, jam. God is faithful. He has two or three private jets. In Auchi, where there's no airport. So if God says, stay in local job, be here. You won't like move to Abuja. You'll be shocked. Those of you that are saying that you came to serve in Kogiz, the land is dry. See? <laughs> see? Go and see coppers in Abuja. Trekking. Ah! If you doubt it, advise your younger brother to go to Abuja. Advise your younger brother. He will tell the story. They don't send you in Abuja. Zero, you are nothing. We have zero people looking for you. You came with Kaki. So, you will see them trekking. You, you, anytime I see a couple in Abuja, I say, I say you walked it, man. Enjoy. You, you walked it. Enjoy. I will have, my sister said in Abuja, my brother, I had all, all I needed was to send my number. I said, me, I'm not sending you. Nothing. I told them, if they post me to Medugure, I'm going there. Money is not in Abuja, Lagos, or Port Harcourt. Not, not these places. Where God sends you is your prosperity. God is faithful. God leads you to a spouse. Stay with that person. There are testimonies. Look at the, Dr. Paul. Look at the story. Look at the Kenneth. Look at the idea boy. He had to sell car. His wife was driving. She said that there are many suitors looking for her that time. She chose the idea boy. Look at her and him now. I want to tell you that God is faithful. The little thing that you have now, value it and look at the testimonies of others. And continue. You see, you are paying your tithe. It looks as if there is no result. Continue paying. You are giving your first fruit. It looks as if you are a fool. Continue giving. You are giving sacrifices. I want to tell you that God is faithful. God will bless you in one day. That 2000... You see, there was one time... Um, don't want to be sharing money story, but the time I saw one alert somewhere, <laughs> then I had the Holy Spirit told me, 
I can give you in one day what you cannot get in ten years. Yeah. I'm not on that salary, so my wife was collecting salary. So I got, I got one allowance. So I asked her, please calculate how much your salary is in this allowance now. <laughs> calculate, divide your salary by this credit allowance. So who is the senior here? <laughs> Don't give for a problem. So yeah. yeah. You can be there sweating like a bank. You can't get you in the lag, you like biking. Be there. See, now say it is hard word, not hard work that make people. Hard word, word. Hard. If it's hard work, that man at, at Dankolo Junction, Uganda Junction will be rich. You like hard work? Continue. Hallelujah. I believe in hard work. I believe in the faithfulness of God. Now some of you say, either I don't like hard work, listen to my messages very well, please. Let's be serious. <laughs> so testimonies reveals what? God's faithfulness. Number nine. Testimonies confirm that God confirms his word. In Isaiah 44, 26, the Bible says, God confirmed the word of his servant and performed what? The counsel. Many times your pastors have prayed for you. The testimony has come, but you don't want to share it. Because it has to do with money. Because when you share, the pastor is expecting to share. <laughs> but it's really painful to see that you have prayed for people. Next Sunday, you come back with your testimonies and never not to come back. You coming back and share your testimonies encourages the pastor. Come on, don't you think so? It will encourage you to pray again. Next time, the Holy Spirit says, Next Sunday, you will say it. But you have been saying next Sunday and you don't come and testify. Next time, you say, Ah, you will not say it again. Let your pastor know that God confirms his word. Hallelujah. I have people that have been healed of diseases, like serious cases, and they will not testify till eight months later. Since four months later. So, in fact, they will share the testimony, by the way. If praying for a headache is simple, try it. <clears throat> if it's praying for it's simple, just try it. And you see that it's not easy to say, Thus say the Lord, and he say, Thus, and it's coming to pass. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. If hearing from God is easy, hear God for us. Please, tell us what God is saying. Or tell us the topic for next week Sunday, please. I'm waiting. You have my number. I'm going to be easy like that. Come on, are we together? So testimonies confirm that God confirm. When we declare and then you have the testimony, see, something happened one time. And then, immediately the testimony happened. Then I was trying to say, ah, it could be that because this was already on the ground or even before the declaration. Maybe, and then the Holy Spirit said, you know, the Holy Spirit said, you are not a fool. But that was the way it came to my spirit. Like, you are behaving like a fool. Yeah. Like, you are behaving like a fool. But the Holy Spirit that be walking need make, like, everything God is behind the scene. Behind the scene. So let your pastor know that what he prayed for has come to pass. What he declared came to pass. Don't say, I don't want you to feel special. Wow. Number 10. Testimonies can lead to the salvation of someone. In Mark chapter 5, verse 19 to 20, the Bible says, when the man shared his testimony of how he was healed with demons, he was healed. Many people have shared their testimony of how they were free from addiction. Many stop addictions. Come on, are we together? That your testimony can lead to the salvation of someone can lead to the salvation of someone. So sharing of how you used to live your life and how God has changed you. There is a man of God in Ghana, God Archbishop Nick Duncan Williams. I don't know if you know his story. He said that his, his strength in most of his crusade is his own personal story. They used to call him Nicky. Nicky, when he was young. He used to mention the, 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 the hotels he used to go from secondary school. Guandola in Accra. He used to mention the names. Say he was a, a customer of prostitutes. They knew him. He was a Badoski. And then one day he was in his room because, of course, somebody like that should have a lot of demons. The demons in his, in his, in, in, in his body told him to carry his hand and put in fire. So he took his hand and put in fire and the demons said, keep your hand there. If you see, he doesn't have these two fingers. He stayed there until the fire burned his hand and the demon said, remove your hand. Imagine how your hand can be on fire. You know, feel it. That was how they had to amputate his hands. And then now he's born again. 
When he shares a story to you that you just started fornication, you will repent. <laughs> Don't you think so? You just started fornication. You are just a JJC fornication. And you hear a, a professional prostitution. I just repent that you, you just come down. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Hear stories of bad arm robbers have repented or cultists have repented. When you hear their stories, you see, many times there are certain people that want to come out of certain things, but they don't know how. But when they hear your story, they will come and pray, okay, how did you do it? How can I get out? Many people are suffering from pornography. If you come and testify that you are free from pornography, somebody can have faith, faith that can come out. So your testimony can strengthen other people. Tell people how you used to drink before. How bad and bad you were. It can save someone. Because people naturally open up to people that have experienced what they have experienced before. When you hear that this pastor was like this, wow, you know you can understand it, you can tell him. But people open up to people that, when you hear people have done certain things before, it helps. How do we testify? You testify publicly and privately. Number three. Number two. You testify clearly. In First Chronicles 16 verse 8. Don't be vague. Even though there are times when you need to be vague. Maybe you just mention enterprises. Or you just mention... Um, you mention what, what do you mention again? <laughs> just mention enterprises. Hallelujah. But sometimes you need to be clear. There are testimonies that you need to become more clear and say them. You cannot come out and tell people that, wow, I've got a miracle of 10 million. As I'm talking to you now, there's 10 million Britain in my account. No, Charlie, it's not like that. Just say, God has changed my financial story. What I used to be before. And that's the way you say that one. There's a way you don't say certain things, but sometimes you need to be clear. But people need to know that it's on financial success. Come on, out together. Yes. If God has given you a spouse, that one is open. Why are you sliding the person? Eh? See, in this church, I have had people quarrel and left, left because the guy covered that he was in a relationship. So the lady fell in love with him. Only discovered that he was, the guy was in love. The lady had to leave family house. It broke her heart. And the guy brought her for counseling that I didn't know why she went this far. You remember? I look at the guy and say, you're wicked. Like in my mind, I did not say, but you're wicked. He coldly covered his relationship. Because at least the girl would have had him one day making a call. Or a message coming. Or a WhatsApp set. But the guy covered the girl. And then he was showing up. I believe he must have shown love to this one before she fell in love. The girl nearly broke down. Can she, to her, she has found a husband. She, found, she has fantasized. I hear of NYC's love stories. Mine has happened. Only to hear that I mean, the guy was in love. So that kind of testimony, be clear about it, please. If a guy has found you, tell us you are now found, so that the guy is eyeing you can calm down. Come and be saying, God has done it. God has done what? <laughs> and they are still collecting transfer money from the brothers in church. Just hang out there. Just, hang, just call the chatting. In the belly of the guy, you say a king is born. Oh, just uncommitted un, un, un statements, which, which is not correct. There are people that their relationship is a, like a book of revelation. Even even the book of revelation, you can understand. Yeah, you will never know their relationship. Never. That kind of person is dangerous. I'm telling you. Yeah, the one that you hear that I just travel. Let me go. Home. You just hear about their wedding. That kind of person. That, yeah. It's, it's, it's looking. I'm saying it funny now, but right? But I'm saying it with pain because I've known what I, it is what I've seen it before. Yeah. Why can't you come out and say it? Let us know you are picked. So that can, the brothers can start looking elsewhere. You to eat your phone and sister, tell the other sister, let them be free. You cannot be a fine boy and then you have someone somewhere and the ladies are expecting God to touch his heart. Meanwhile, you're already taken. Yeah. <laughs> it's not all I'm saying is not funny. Sometimes be clear on things like this. Come on, all together. That's why I always advise men to wear a wedding ring if you are married. Nowadays, even though I know ladies don't, don't respect it again, but just wear it. helps you. You see, small girl now should be looking at you, maybe you're eyeing her. 
I just look at you. <laughs> you know, ladies, right? But it's, it's like they just are just as if, as if you're looking at her. I used to bring my ring in front like Charlie, I'm properly booked. Sometimes I wish I said, where I can put my wife. Let her be the wallpaper behind my photo. Hey, something like that. So I can clear some, some, some stupid misconceptions on people's mind. Be clear on certain things. Come on, all together. Don't come and be mysterious up and down every time. <laughs> no. Look at us, bless who say it. There are people that go to America and don't test. Only to hear that uh, I've moved. VPN has changed. Don't change. Number two, share your testimony humbly and gratefully. Be humble while sharing your testimony. Number four, acknowledge the channel that God used to bless you without testimony. In Luke 8 verse 3, Jesus acknowledged the people that God used to bless him financially. Sometimes share. Now, if you cannot share your testimony verbally, you can write your testimony and then it will be read for you. So that is verbally or non-verbally. In Winner's Chapel, they have what we call online testimony or written testimonies. So even on Sundays, when there is nobody to testify live, they read those written testimonies. So if you don't have the boldness, maybe you are afraid people will laugh at you, write your testimonies and give and say, please, this is my testimony, share or read it on my behalf. Sometimes the people can even come out and say, let the person, you share my own testimony on my behalf. Come on all together. But by all means, share your testimony. What do you do after sharing your testimony? Number one, maintain the principles that brought your testimony. Because what brought the testimony is what will sustain it. In John 10 verse 35, the Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. If you got a testimony by, by fasting and prayer, Charlie, you have to continue fasting and praying. If you got a testimony by consecration, consecrate yourself forever. You cannot get something from God and go and keep it with the devil. It won't work. The principles that brought your healing are the principles that will be required to sustain your healing. If you gave and God gave you prosperity, you need to continue giving to remain prosperous. You see, the day you are tired of giving means you are tired of receiving. Come on, are we together? The day you are tired of giving means what? You are tired of receiving. Number two, be humble after testifying. Romans 9 verse 16, the Bible says, It is not of him that will it, not of him that run it. After you have shared your testimony, be humble. Because I've seen people develop peacocking shoulders after sharing testimonies. Number three, never use your testimony to intimidate and bully people. Wow, I've seen this one severally. Especially spiritual brothers and spiritual sisters sharing testimony to supernatural encounters. For the past 31 days, even till this morning, an angel always walked me in the morning. Anything I say, and I discover that in those that wonders, anything I say happen. Even right now, anything that I say will happen. Yeah. The bully people with your testimony as ritual encounters. Don't never be moved by anything like that. Don't use your testimony to intimidate us. You did nothing, and then suddenly you became a millionaire. Please wake up. Let's be serious. Don't bully us with your testimony. Look as if we are not committed. Because we are trying. So listen, I just came to this place. In one month, people, what people could not do in 15 years, I did it in one month. Be coming down. Just be coming down sometimes. <laughs> Don't bully people with your testimony. That's the way you can say. See, it's not only in what you say. It's the way you say it matters. Come on, all together. I told the Lord I will marry before I'm 23. And then there are a lot of ladies that are 35 waiting call for husband. Me, I'm 33, and God has done it. My husband just showed up when I prayed. When the pastor said this, I did it, and my husband just showed up. Please, don't bully us. Calm down. Share your testimony humbly. Come on, all together. Yeah. You can bully people. Have you, seen, have you been bullied by somebody's testimony before? You're not, you're not understanding my message. Have you been bullied? Have you bullied somebody, you yourself? So from today, don't bully somebody, please. Sometimes, even, you see, I have noticed something in life. I believe, first of all, the Holy Spirit told me that I have noticed in life that in a cycle, let's say a family of eight sisters, if one of them don't have a child, when you have a family meeting, you don't discuss about children. It's not fair. In a family of four brothers, 
or five sisters, when three are married, one is not brother married, when you gather together, it's not good to start discussing about your husband. It's like you are shaming, you are putting their shame in their face. So they need to be sensitive, even while testifying. I just got married in nine months, my baby has arrived. In front of people that have been trusting God for nine, ten, fifteen years. There is a way you share it with love. Please be gracious. Don't bully people. I never had a carryover in my, my school. If I wrote an exam, even I, I, my paper was used as a marking scheme. Good. There are people that have three years peel over. Then you testify. There is a way you share a testimony. As I, like, be coming down. Don't bully people with your testimony. I've never been sick. Even Panadol in my life. Since when I was born. Even when I was sick and they give me drugs, I don't take it. Wow. Wow. I don't drink water and I just sleep and I wake up. <sighs> my spirit is clear. You are AA. <laughs> Wait. Tell your neighbor, Apostle, you are here. <laughs> Please be coming down. Don't bully us with your testimonies. When you are sharing your testimony, be sensitive. Come on, all together. Be sensitive. Be sensitive. Don't bully people with it. Share a love. Sometimes don't even need to say certain things because of certain things. You understand, guys? And then number four, number four, you need to war with testimonies that are still coming. In First Timothy chapter one, verse eighteen, the Bible says, "War," because when you are sharing a testimony, there are still things you are trusting God for. Then you fight, fight and battle for those testimonies. First Timothy one, verse eighteen. By this word I have committed unto you that thou might war a good warfare. And then finally, beware and be careful with people who take advantages of testifiers. What did I say? Beware and careful with people who take advantages of what? Testifiers. Now, what I mean by that is, somebody can come and testify that God just gave me a million naira. It is recorded that commonly after service, some members will meet him at the door. <laughs> you my rent. I have half. Please. Because they had you shared one million naira. I have half. I just need 20,000 naira to complete it. And the way they will present it, even if you are losing, you cannot say no. So now you can share your story of how you used to, uh, uh, how you need to live an immoral lifestyle and then now you are free. Some people can take that story and begin to use it against you. So like Catherine Kuma, she's married a man that was married to another woman. And then later left the man. And then continued. The people were bullying her with her story. Anytime they look for trouble, she said that that Catherine Kuma you're talking about is dead. This is a new Catherine Kuma. Let no devil use your testimony against you. When they have the audacity to confront you, be bold enough to face them. You were healed of a particular disease and you testify about it. There were people that are healed of certain diseases don't even testify. Because why would people look at them? Ah! Oh, wow. How do you know if he's not back? So when you meet people like that, we must fight them in the system. Nobody should use testimonies of financial breakthrough to begin to bully around the person. It's not correct. Are we together? Don't use somebody's bad stories to begin to bully the person because the person was bold enough to come and share. There are sometimes then there are people that will share certain testimonies. That was, if that was, even some people don't share testimonies. That I used to drink before, I used to smoke before. The next time you are singing on song here, look at him. You smoke before. <laughs> how, how many people know what people ah, people are in this washer? Who are know what people are? Ah, as you are praising God, you are changed now. Oh. They are using that against you. Say before I was in the church, but I was still doing these bad things. But now the Lord has healed me, the Lord has delivered me. Let's be careful around them, Sha. Be careful of people like that. When we meet them, we must fight them in the system. Somebody's testimonies, we believe that the person has changed. You must receive their testimony as the truth. Are we together? And never take advantage of them. 